Hey guys, it's Lisa, and today we're going to create this beautiful side table from a dated, thrifted find. So, uh, I've already given this a good cleaning, and, uh, and now I'm going to take the, um, the drawer pull off. Uh, after I get this pull off, I realize that there's some sort of stain on this drawer, uh, it, but it isn't raised or anything, and I scrub it, and it doesn't come off, so uh, I determined that it, that my paint will stick to it anyway. It almost looks like it was an overspray or something, but uh, there was no spray anywhere else on the drawer, so I, I'm not sure what happened. But this piece was a very well-made piece. It was really heavy. And other than what was going on with that drawer, it wasn't. It was a pretty clean piece. Uh, and I think it had been taken care of. It could have, I could have sold it just like this. Uh, because it was in really great condition. But um, this color for me just doesn't sell. Just the raw, I mean, not the raw wood, but the stained wood. It just doesn't sell well in my store. Uh, but once I paint it, uh, then I don't have any trouble at all selling pieces like this. One coat would have covered this, I think. Uh, but I did decide to do a couple of coats to make sure I got good coverage. So I just put one coat on and let it dry well. And then uh, put another coat on. Now, what I'm hating here about this um, side table uh, while I'm painting it is all the intricate detail. Because if you've ever tried to brush paint a piece like this, uh, you know, you have to get in all those nooks and crannies. And um, I, I would have, in warmer weather, taken it outside and give it a uh, coat of... Uh, the chalk paint with my sprayer uh, but the weather's not good and I don't have a place inside to spray so uh, I'm just going to take the paints in, in painting this. Uh, what I hate so much about it right now in painting it is what I'm going to absolutely love when I go to do my white wax coat because um, taking a piece like this and putting a wax coat over the top, a white wax or or an antiquing wax, any kind of wax with color, uh, just makes those details pop even more and it's so beautiful on pieces like this. And really, it doesn't take me very long to, to paint this. Uh, believe it or not, I only paid $10 for this piece. Uh, I thought I was paying $19.95, and then when I got to check out, it just happened to be one of the colors that was half price. So, uh, that was a nice little surprise to get this table for $10. Now, a lot of times when I'm trying to paint over this darker wood, especially if I'm using a lighter color, um, this, especially with it has a reddish stain like this, it tries to pull red through. Uh, the, the walnut for me tries to pull yellow through, um, but I felt like this had a good finish on it, and I didn't want to sand this piece and disturb that finish and, and cause that to happen, uh, and the chalk paint sticks really well to this, um, but if I did have that bleed through problem that I sometimes have, then what I would have to do, and you'll see it when when your first coat dries, but what I would have to do in that case is to uh, just give it a good clear coat, actually a couple coats of clear coat if that starts to happen. Um, but it doesn't at all with this piece. It covers really well, and because I didn't disturb that finish, I didn't have any bleed-through issues. These pieces are so different from one another. What works really well for one doesn't for another. Um, and um, you just never know what you're going to get. But, uh, but this was a really good piece to work with. I don't know about you guys, but I find painting really therapeutic. Um, actually creating in any way, I find that very therapeutic. Um, 
so the drawer was in really good condition but um i, I didn't really like this light wood uh with this piece and i and anytime there's just one drawer it's a great opportunity to add a an extra little detail that sets your piece apart from others so um i'm going to do some decoupaging on the inside of this uh, of this drawer and uh, the decoupage that i'm going to use um, has um, a light background and so if i try to put that over this light wood it would show up because the wood is light uh, but it, it just what wouldn't be nearly as pretty. So it's always a good idea to paint uh, your background color uh, the same color that's in the background of your decoupage paper. And um, and, I, and I'm only going to do one coat uh, because it's going to be covered anyway. Um, but uh, as you can see, I finished my coat and let it dry good. And now I'm going to use my decoupage paper. And by decoupage paper, I mean uh, gift wrap tissue. Uh, that's great to, to decoupage with. I think I mentioned in another video. And this is that little botanical theme or um, pattern. And I found this at the Dollar Tree. I uh, found it last year. I haven't found it this year. If I find it, I'm going to... I'm going to get some more of it because it's it's been really great for little projects like this. And I just put a coat of that uh, Mod Podge on this. And, and then I'm just going to cover the bottom only of, of this drawer. Now, as you can see, I didn't bother painting the back of the front of the drawer because that's not going to show anyway. And then I would have to paint that little lip on the outside. And I don't want to have my drawer try to stick or anything. So I usually don't paint that part of the drawer. And then I'll just press that down well. And then I'll go back and put some decoupage on the second half. And, and that's all there is to covering the inside of this drawer. And it adds just a little extra touch that, uh, the, that they don't see in, in other pieces generally and kind of set your piece apart now, i don't usually go through this if there's multiple drawers but like i said this only having one drawer is a really good opportunity for this and that drawer pull that was was dark colored it was a beautiful drawer pull and so i wanted to use it but i put some white wax on that and look how pretty that turned out and so I put that drawer pull back on the drawer. I didn't, I didn't put that, I didn't film that. But so here I am putting this white wax on, on the, uh, on the piece. I'm starting with the detailed parts and getting that done first. And then I'll, I will uh, put it on the flat parts and wipe that off. Even on the flat parts, you're going to see, um, a, ch a difference in your color and it, it kind of grabs little foggy areas which is very pretty but in these detailed areas is where it makes the most difference and uh, I apologize for the people walking around in the back um, I just I don't have the time to do these videos if I don't do them when I'm working and my store is open today, so you'll see people walking around in the back. I cut as much of that off as I, as I could. Uh, so um, just ignore that there's people walking in the back. Now generally I would use a wax brush for this. But, um, but I wanted to be able to get down in that detail really good. So I'm using a smaller brush here. Uh, in hindsight, I could have probably used the regular wax brush, and it would have went a little faster. Uh, but um, this worked out also. Now here is where you'll be able to see um, the change in this detail here. So once you put that on there, and then you wipe it off, and that... Um, that white wax settles into all these little crevices. It, it makes that detail pop so good. And uh, it just makes, it sets this 
item apart from other little side tables because uh, you just it's it's very noticeable and in this case and, and I don't know if you guys have had this issue with the Waverly wax um, which is specifically why I, why I used it here uh, is it's a wetter wax that I'm used to working with and uh, so when I go to put pressure on that uh, to wipe that wax off, it pulls a lot of my paint off and does some distressing, which turns out really pretty. Now, if you didn't want that distressing that I wanted, um, then you could just use another type of wax. Or you could uh, maybe not put it on quite as heavy, just put a little on as, at a time. I, I put it on pretty heavy. Uh, because I felt like that white wax down in the cre crevices uh, with the um, distressing was just such a pretty look. And I'll, I'll show you some close-ups of it later. But I think you can see there on that, uh, on that leg on the right how pretty that is. Now, white wax, some pieces that don't have much detail and um and that's when you can use your wax molds um i use those iod uh, molds and uh, i've got the furniture detail molds and stuff uh, i've got a collection of those and there's so many of those that you can add on and then once it dries putting that white white you know paint over the top of it uh, with your furniture and then um and then put your white wax in it and so then you can do this same thing on other pieces that aren't so detailed i may do a, a video just on those uh on those um molds because they're really fun to work with and they're like stencils they're a little bit pricey but you can use them over and over and over and um they're well worth uh, putting the money into and uh, they don't sponsor me I'm not sponsored by anyone but um, but I, I do love using those especially on furniture and you can see this piece starting to come together it it looks so much different than it it did to begin with and it really hasn't taken very long at all uh, to finish it so when you're thrifting or yard selling or maybe even have a family member or somebody who wants to give you an item like this and you think, eh, it doesn't fit into my decor or it's too dated or whatever, uh, you know, cottage core is coming back. Um, and um, you can just do little bits of cottage core in with your farmhouse style decor and uh, especially in a bedroom or a little girl's room or or maybe uh, a guest room and if you can't find a place for an item like this in your home get your husband to build you a she shed then you can dress it just as cottagey as you want is cottagey a word i don't really think so but it is for me now you can make these waxes any color you want if you buy clear wax which i did here uh, if you buy clear wax you can just put you some drops of paint in it until you get it uh, the color that you want it and whatever color that you want to settle down into those creases then just uh, tint your wax that color and just use regular craft paint i think that's what i used here and if I wanted to make something to coordinate with this piece, then I might would do like an off-white on it and, um, and then use this color of green uh, to tint my wax. And that's really pretty also. I really like doing these small pieces like this because um, they go so quickly and I... When I'm starting on a piece, I get excited about the end result, and when I'm working on a big piece, it you know that 
gratification takes a while and that's why I like these small pieces because I can get to the finish a lot quicker. I'm trying to do some of these uh, furniture flips on my channel and, and a lot of thrift flips and uh, trying to, to make it more versatile but making sure that I stick to what I do. Um, but um, if you guys have any idea on what you would like me to do, then uh, please let me know in the comments. And uh, let me know in the comments what you think of this color. This one would also be really pretty uh, with antiquing wax over the top of it. And it would dull this color even more. I, I didn't do that on this one because um, I didn't want to dull this color more. I really like this color of green. But it would be pretty with uh, with an antiquing wax on it. And, and then you would have that brown settle into those creases and it would be really pretty. But I wanted to give this more of a cottage feel. And uh, to me, the white wax uh, adds more of a cottage feel to this color. So you see, there's still a change in that top. Even though there's no detail for it to settle into, it gives it that milky finish. Just keep that, uh, keep your wiping in the same direction. Uh, because otherwise it would it would have kind of an odd finish to it. But if, as long as you wipe in the same direction, just on those uh, on those smooth areas, uh, then you're then it's going to be a real pretty finish still with this wax. I wanted to share with you guys something that I've decided to do to my furniture is add this little scripture stamp to the side of the drawer. I feel like I don't do enough to share Christ, and this is just a simple thing that I can do to add to these pieces. Uh, I really appreciate you guys who are subscribing and sharing and commenting. All this is helping my channel grow, and you just have no idea how much I appreciate you. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I hope I've inspired you to do a piece of your own. Uh, look at the gorgeous detail that that wax and distressing combine add to this piece. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.